In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to nail your white balance in Lightroom every time without having to use a gray card or the eyedropper tool or any of that nonsense that just takes time or doesn't get it quite right. Let's jump right in. Getting white balance right is tedious, or it can be tedious. There's a couple ways to do it. You see sometimes you see pros using white cards or gray cards on the shoot, and that can work, but it only works if you're in a controlled environment and you're not changing from shot to shot what the white balance is gonna be. If that changes, you need to redo the gray card and reset your white balance. The good news is if you shoot in raw, you can adjust white balance after the fact. And that's what we're gonna take a look in Lightroom. Okay, so let's jump right into Lightroom on this one and let's talk about white balance. The way that most people try to do white balance is with this eyedropper. It seems like the easiest way to do it, but let's take this sunset picture. Where do I click? Uh, maybe we have some white waves over here, but they're in the shadow, so let's click on them and see what happens. Uh, that looks green and way too yellow. Maybe it's okay. Maybe I'd go in here and adjust, probably add a little more magenta and, and maybe bring down the yellow a little bit. I'm not sure. Now let's take a portrait image. Let's try the eyedropper on this one. I know I have white. Okay, that's good, except she kind of looks a little, little yellow. Doesn't look great, right? So how do you let's undo those two how do you handle white balance when the eyedropper is not working here's a quick and easy way to get it right just about every time go down to your vibrance and saturation turn them both all the way up what this does is let you more easily visualize how much blue versus yellow and how much green versus magenta there are in the image so I can go over here now and instead of trying to figure out where it should be, I can just look at this and see very easily. Okay, now the blue is creeping in too much. Now it might be getting too yellow over here. So where do I want to balance it out? Well, I know that the water down here should have some blue in it. So let's, let's make sure there's some blue. That might be too much. Let's back it off. And it might be right. Now this, there's some dark areas down here so why don't I pull up the shadows and I can work with it a little better now I can see the, the water is very blue maybe I want to go a little bit more now I've gotten rid of the blue in the water but I can see very easily that there's some magenta there uh, maybe you want that maybe you don't but this lets you visualize it now if I go too far well, that's not good that's a little magenta and I can back off now that's right in the middle so I've kind of gotten a way different number than what the eyedropper gave me. Let's double click these and see what it looks like regular. Yeah, that looks like a pretty good balanced image. Now it looks, keep in mind, it's going to look to your eye very desaturated at this point because you were just looking at it at like saturation overload. Don't worry about it. You can go in later on and add a little vibrance, add a little saturation. When you do have the white balance just perfectly nailed, the image might look a little desaturated because you have balanced colors in the image. Now let's jump over to this one, which I th think was gonna be a little trickier. So, like we said, the eyedropper, maybe, maybe the dress works. It's not really, we can't quite get the skin tones right on that one. So let's use this technique. Let's blast it all the way up. Now you can see, because this was right about there, and you can see there's a lot of magenta in the back there, so let's balance that out. Now we can get even more specific because we have the saturation all the way up. I can go down into the HSL panel and target just that orange. There we go. So now because I put the saturation and the vibrance all the way up, I knew that I was getting just way too much of that sunset light on her face that was just not looking realistic. So I can go in and adjust that specifically. Let's go back up here. 
Now maybe maybe there's a little too much blue in there. Let's let's get that back up. Yeah, now those white backgrounds look great. Let's double click that. Now it almost looks like really almost black and white here because we we're looking at so much saturation before. So let's bring a little bit of it back. I think we have a perfect white balance image here. This technique works great when you don't have a white card or a gray card to use in your image and you're shooting raw and you can adjust the white balance after the fact. Okay, so that was easy. I think this is a great way to adjust your white balance when you're shooting. This works for landscapes, this works for portraits, it works in a wide variety of shots. But it doesn't always work. There are a couple of exceptions. You can't use it with video because unless you're shooting raw video, you're not going to have the latitude to adjust in post that you do with a raw photo. And overall, if you're shooting video, you're going to be spending more time setting up the shot anyway, so that's when you can use the gray card and get the white balance right in camera. Also, having a calibrated screen, having a screen that is adjusted and calibrated to be accurate helps a lot in this situation. I definitely recommend calibrating your screen and getting a screen calibrator. Uh, I'll put a link in the, in the uh, description with one that I think works really well. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this makes your editing a little easier and you can get your white balance right and not have to worry about gray cards or anything like that. So if you found this helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and you'll see lots more videos just like this, helpful tips in Lightroom and photography in general.